Hello, hello, grade 12s. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, Uabudua Sos Ukobela Wemet. And without any further ado, let's look at these questions that we have here. Okay, so we have question nine, still on electrodynamics. It says the diagram below shows a generator with copper coils being rotated between the poles of permanent magnets. Right, then we can see that 9.1 says a state to the direction of the induced current in the left side of the coil marked AB. State only A to B or B to A. Note that this here is a generator and then what we have concluded with the generator is that the direction of the current is the same as the direction of the rotation of the coil so we can see here being indicated is the direction of the coil note that in a generator the the direction of the coil is always indicated you just have to check here there's just an arrow that shows there. So this arrow indicates that this uh, coil here is being rotated anti-clockwise, meaning since this is a generator, also our current needs to flow in an anti-clockwise direction. Now, looking at this from B to A, this would form a perfect anti-clockwise direction, right? So that means for 9.1.1, our solution should be from B to A, right? So B to A. The 9.1.2 says the name of the law that relates the induced EMF of the rate of change of magnetic flask in the coil, right? So what is the name of the law? We already know, drum roll. So it is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, right? The 9.1.3 says what should be done to change this generator to a DC generator? Now, if you haven't noticed yet, this is an AC generator because it has slip rings, right? So that means we need to do what? Replace the slip rings with a split ring commutator, right? So that it becomes a DC generator. Now, let's go to a 9.2. It says the shape uh, of the EMF of this generator between the points E and F is shown below. The peak EMF output is 20 volts as shown in the graph. Now they say for 9.2.1, <coughs> on the same set of axes, draw the output EMF if the speed of the coil is halved. Now if we have the speed of the coil, we know that uh, that must also have the EMF of the coil because if we have the speed of the coil, we are expecting the magnetic uh, flux linkage to also uh, decrease. And then if that decreases EMF and uh, the magnetic flux are directly proportional, so EMF also has to be halved. Then uh, in that case, that means if we have our peak EMF for our Vmax being 20, that means this time around, if we have to half it, it has to be 10. So that means it will be somewhere here. And then 10 and negative 10 there. Then we have positive 10, comes back to negative 10, positive 10, and then negative 10. Right. So note that we are still keeping the period the same. This only affects uh, the EMF of uh, the the electrical device here, right, or the generate. Okay, so in this case, uh, we are done just like that. So maybe we might need to indicate that we have 10 here. And then here we have negative 10, right? So that's all. The 9.2.2 now, they want us to explain the change, if any, on the EMF graph. We know that there was a change that uh, occurred. So let's explain. So we are going to say from Faraday's law, induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flask, right? So if you can still remember this formula here, E is equals to negative N, change in phi over change in T. So now if we are halving uh, the speed, this will decrease the magnetic flask, right? 
So this will decrease the magnetic flask. But since we know that magnetic flask and EMF, they are directly proportional, that means a decrease in the magnetic flask should also result in a decrease in the EMF, right? So hence halving the speed halves the rate, thus Vmax is halved, right? So we can see that our Vmax now is halved from 20 to 10. Right, okay, so I hope uh, all that makes sense. Let's now proceed. 9.3. So we know that we have to expect um, at least one calculation question, but then at most two, right? So there's only just one or two calculation questions when it comes to this topic. So we know that uh, we take everything when it comes to this topic. It's a hundred percent. Then 9.3, calculate the average power of this generator for five marks. Now, when you see five marks, you already know that you have to solve for two variables. So you have two unknown variables, which might lead you to using two formulas, right? So in your mind, that's what you are keeping, right? So obviously we want to calculate the average power of this generator but then we are given the what the v max right so we know we can calculate the power with the v max we need the v rms so that will be the start of solving this question v rms is equals to v max over root 2 so our v max is 20 then divide that by root 2 we get a uh, 14.14 volts, right? Now at this point, we can now calculate the power average using which formula now? We are given the resistance, 50 ohms. So we can use the formula VRMS square over the resistance, which will be 14.14. And then square, don't forget to square guys. Then our resistance is 50. Now when you punch that into your calculator, you get 3.998, which you can just round off to the nearest whole number. It will be 4 watts, right? So that's your average power for this generator. And that's how you were supposed to tackle this question. So as you can see, easy peasy marks are there. So make sure that you collect 100%. Leave no marks to charity when it comes to this topic, guys. Make sure that you ace it. But then with all that being said, guys, please press the thumbs up button if you have enjoyed the lesson and then you found it helpful. And if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.